Hey everyone, today we are going to continue talking about the elements of art, which is almost like the ingredients of art. Imagine if art was a soup, you would want all these elements in the soup to make it delicious. So the first element of art that we learned about was lines. We need lines in our art, right? The second one is shape. Shape is the one we're going to be concentrating on today. And then at the very end, we are going to add some color. So these are all elements of art or special ingredients for our art that we're going to use to make it look fabulous. So there are two special kinds of shapes. The first family of shapes are called geometric shapes. Can everyone say geometric? Geometric shapes are shapes that are perfect, that have perfect measurements like this. What kind of shape is this? It's a circle, right? And it's a perfect circle. So it would be called geometric. What kind of shape is this one? Right, it's a rectangle. How about this one? It is a triangle. How about this one? This is a little stack of post-it notes. That one's a square, okay? So this is one family of shapes called geometric shapes. The other family of shapes are my favorite ones. These shapes are called organic shapes. Where have you guys heard the word organic? Have you ever heard the word organic? So the word organic reminds me of things that are found in nature are things that are natural. So that's one way you can remember the word organic. So organic shapes are different than geometric shapes because they're not perfect. They're things that are found in nature, kind of like this leaf here. You see how it's not, doesn't have perfectly straight corners. It's kind of curved and goes out and you know, it's different on all the different sides. How about this potato? This is an organic shape because it's cut curves, it's different, it's kind of imperfect. Here's this one, here's a shell, a clamshell. See how this one, it's not a perfect circle, it's not a perfect oval, it's kind of got a curve over here, then it comes down, it kind of comes to a point, but not quite. How about this one? This is also an organic shape because no, the, none of the sides are perfectly straight or pointy. It comes from nature. Here's an example of an organic shape that I cut out of paper. See how it's kind of like wobbly and weird? This would be considered an organic shape. So everyone take a few minutes and see if they can go find one object in their house that is a geometric shape and one object in their house that would be an organic shape. Okay? I'm gonna move these ones aside. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to practice drawing geometric shapes. And we're not going to use rulers today, but we are just going to practice trying to make um, nice squares, circles, and triangles the best that we can. Now we're not worried about adding color quite yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to use either a pencil, um, maybe a black crayon or a black marker. Um, try to use something that doesn't have color yet, if you have that at, at your house. Okay, so since we're gonna do geometric first, I'm gonna get a blank sheet of paper, and I'm gonna make my paper go wide like this. Not tall, I'm gonna use it wide like this. And I think I'm going to start with, maybe I'll use my black marker so you guys can see it well. So I'm gonna start over on one side we are gonna create little monsters or little creatures out of shapes. So I'm gonna start by drawing a geometric shape. Which one should I start with? Maybe I'm gonna start with a square. Okay, so I'm gonna start on one side. I'm gonna do start at a corner. Then I'm gonna do a line going down, a straight line going over, Remember squares, all the sides are the same, so I'm gonna try my best to make them all look the same. Straight line going up, 
and straight line going over. And now I have a closed shape, which is a square made up of four straight lines. Okay, now I'm gonna move over. I'm gonna give him a little friend. What's another geometric shape? I think I'm going to make this one a triangle. I'm gonna start up at that top point, up at the top, start with a little dot. I'm gonna make a diagonal line, which is a slanted line coming down. Then I'm gonna make another line going over. Then I'm gonna close those lines with another diagonal line. Trying my best to make the lines nice and straight because geometric shapes are nice and straight. Okay, the next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do a circle. Now, if you have something like this at home, like a lid, you could even trace it if you wanted. Um, you can draw it with your hand if you prefer, but if you have something like this, sometimes I like to use these to get my shapes nice and neat. So if you're gonna use something like this, um, you could also use something like this, a lid, or maybe a bottle cap, or maybe a quarter, or anything like that that you have round. So you're gonna take your, your one hand, you're gonna hold it down hard on the paper so it doesn't slide around. I'm gonna hold it down, and then I'm gonna take my marker, I'm going to start at one spot and then I'm going to go slowly all the way around and I'm not going to let my other hand up off the lid because if I let it go, it would slide around and then I'd make a mess. Go all the way to that point where I stopped and then I take it away and I have a quite beautiful circle, okay? But if you don't have a lid, you could just draw it naturally, okay? So the last one, ooh, see, I used almost my whole paper and I wanted to add a little rectangle. So maybe I'm gonna make this little rectangle small. I'm gonna fit him right over here on the edge. So if I'm gonna start a rectangle, I'm gonna start up here in the corner. Then I'm gonna do a straight line coming down, a straight line going over. Remember, rectangles are long on one side and skinny on the other. Another line going up and another line coming over. Ooh, see, I have to bring that up to make sure it's closed because shapes all are completely closed. Okay, now that I have that part done, I'm going to use my dark marker again to make little hands and feet and faces. This part is super fun and you guys can do this any way you want. I'm gonna draw some little feet with some little ovals some legs like this. Maybe I'm gonna make his feet little rectangles. Or no, those aren't rectangles, those are triangles, excuse me. Then I'm going to make two lines coming down like this. What shapes do I wanna make his feet? Maybe I'm gonna use little lines so they look like bird feet. One, two, three. You don't have to do it like me though. Okay, now what should I make this last one? Hmm. Maybe I'm going to use little rectangles for his feet. Okay, cool. All right, now they need arms. Maybe we can have one arm going up and the other arm going down. You can do this any way you want. I'm gonna start with triangles arms. I'm gonna make his arms going up. Maybe squares arms are gonna be coming down. Maybe Circle's arms are going to be at his sides. Ooh, and this one's so close. He's going to have to have his arm going up. Maybe this one going down. He looks like he's dancing, doesn't he? Okay, now I'm going to add the faces. Now you can do this any which way you want. I'm going to add two circles, which are geometric shapes, and put two little dots inside. Maybe give him a little nose like that. I'm gonna give him a big happy mouth with one straight line and then one curved line going down and up. Maybe you can give him little teeth. Okay, the next one, maybe I'm gonna make two ovals next to each other for his eyes. Then add two little eyes. Oh, look, it looks like he's looking to the side. Then maybe a little dot for his nose, 
and maybe I want to make this mouth a little bit different than that one. Maybe I'll just make it a curved line like that. Okay, how about this one? I mean, you know what? I think I want this circle monster to have one big eyeball. Why not? So I'm going to make one and then I'm gonna add the little eye like that. Maybe give him an eyelid, which would be, if you start with a circle to create an eyelid, it would just be a straight line going over like this. No, he looks like he's tired. Okay, and now I'm gonna add a mouth, two curved lines next to each other. That's pretty cute. And I'm gonna give him a couple teeth, which are gonna look like little rectangles. <laughs> he looks pretty goofy. Okay, and then this one, I'm just gonna make this one simple and make his eyes like two little dots and maybe two curved lines next to each other. They're all happy. They kind of look like they're dancing, right? Okay, so now, since we're done using our dark marker or our, or our crayon or our pencil, now we can add color at the end. So I'm gonna use crayons. Um, if you have colored pencils, that will work too. Um, use whatever you have, use whatever colors you have. I'm gonna start with orange. And when we make a nice drawing like this, do your best to see if you can use your lines to help you stay inside the shapes that you make to make our picture nice and neat looking. You see how I'm going around those shapes? I'm leaving the eyes white. Okay. Now that I have this orange in my hand, I might wanna make another area orange. Maybe I'm gonna make, I think I'm gonna make a rectangle orange as well. Notice how I'm staying inside my shape and I'm pressing down on the crayon so the color is nice and bright. I'm going over my coloring so there's no white areas. You want to make it nice and bright. Okay, now what color should I choose next? Hmm, what looks nice with orange? I think I'm gonna go with green. Okay, I'm gonna color in his little shoes green. Maybe make him his hands green. I'm gonna do the same over here. Those guys match. Okay. Oh, you know what else you could do? You could color inside his mouth so his teeth stay white. That looks kind of cool. Okay. All right, next I'm gonna do my triangle. I think I'm gonna make my triangle purple. I love purple. Okay. Notice I'm staying in the lines that I created. Making it nice and bright. Ooh, what color should I make his feet? Okay, how about, I love pink. Pink and purple, those are girly colors, right? Boys are, liked, are allowed to like pink and purple too. Those colors are for anyone. Okay, what should I do? What, should, what color should I make the circle? I really like this one. I like how this one is different than these ones. I think I'm gonna make this one, I have this, how about yellow? I love yellow. Now you see how it would be easy if I just went like this and just kind of left it like that? Yeah, that would be okay, but that would be a little bit lazy. Good artists take their time and they make sure that their pictures are nice and bright and detailed. There's no need to rush through it because coloring is fun and relaxing. 
Okay, so I'm gonna make his eyelid yellow too. Going over all my coloring so there's no white spots coming through. It kind of looks like an M&M. &M. Okay, and let's see. Maybe I'm gonna make the inside of his mouth, let me make the inside of his mouth pink. We're almost done. Maybe I'll make his hands yellow too. Okay, now we have a family of geometric shapes and you can add whatever you want to the background. These guys look like they're dancing and partying. So I think I'm gonna add some confetti I love drawing confetti. I'm gonna use all my different colors. Maybe some spirals. Woo, why not? Maybe some zigzags. You could draw your geometric monsters. They could be outside, they could be doing something. Um, you know, what are they doing together? Where are they going? Um, have fun. Finishing your drawing, doing it however you want. Maybe you can create a floor for them to be standing on. Okay, that was fun. Maybe it's a little bit more confetti. Okay, so next we are going to create a drawing using our organic shapes. All right, I can't see what you guys create. Good luck. 